Don't go crazy unless you have to. One of the reasons that the prices are so high right now has to do with an issue that is not going to be an issue forever. Hi there, I'm Mark Anderson. I'm a mortgage banker with Paramount Bank. I am licensed to lend in all 50 states. And no matter where you are, if you're looking at a purchase mortgage or a refinance scenario, give me a call, shoot me a text at the number below any old time. So what we're doing today is a mortgage rate update and we're talking about the year so far. I have a graph here. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you do know how much I love a good graph, specifically when those graphs are about mortgage rates, mortgage bond prices, economic data, that sort of thing. So what we're gonna take a look at here, this is actually a new graph that I put together today. And what it is showing is the relationship that I mentioned in almost every single one of these rate update videos. Uh, and it has to do with the relationship between mortgage bond prices and mortgage rates. Now these two things are what we call inversely related, inversely proportional. So as mortgage bond prices go up, mortgage rates go down. And this chart illustrates this just beautifully. So what we have on the blue line is the bond price data. Now, I won't go into a huge amount of detail, but this is the 2.5% uh, mortgage uh, coupon for a 30-year program. So that bond price, we can see all the way back to January through today. Now, the orange line, this is the average 30-year fixed mortgage rate as published by Mortgage News Daily. This, nothing in this video is intended to be a mortgage quote. Mortgage quotes are complicated. They're, uh, they're, they're custom to your specific scenario. These are just averages as published by Mortgage News Daily. But what is so beautiful about this chart is it just shows so clearly bond prices over here, rates are low. Bond prices go down, rates go up. Bond prices down, rates up, et cetera, et cetera. Big picture wise, what we're seeing, I think, is still in line with the recent video I put together where essentially I predicted, uh, and I don't really think this is a wild prediction by the way, but as the year goes on, it seems very likely that rates are on a very slow but upward overall trend. And I think that we're gonna see that going forward. But I just thought this chart was so beautiful as it, as it very, very clearly illustrates this relationship between the bonds and between mortgage rates. Average rate, according to Mortgage News Daily right now, we're looking at about 3.15%. Uh, and the bond prices are certainly lower today than they were at the beginning of the year. I do believe that these bond prices over time are going to continue to go down overall. And I think that is gonna fall right in line with slowly rising interest rates over the year. So we've talked mortgage rates. I wanna switch gears and provide a quick tip for today that is uh, something that I think a lot of people need to hear. So if you are currently looking to buy a home, you may already be several offers in to this odyssey that is trying to land a home contract in today's environment. The tip that I wanted to give you, and this is probably very unusual advice to get from a mortgage lender, but if you don't need to buy a home right now, I really recommend be careful. Only go crazy if you need to go crazy. If you absolutely have to buy a home right now, there's a few things that you should know. Your competition right now, the other people that are looking to buy homes, they may have lost out on more contracts than you and they may be getting real crazy. A uh, couple things that I'm seeing a lot of People in their standard sales contract in whatever area of the country you are, there are some standard protections that protect you on the buyer side of the transaction. These protections include a financing contingency, they include an inspection contingency, they include an appraisal contingency. Um, it, in a normal market, it would be very unusual to see anyone waive any of these contingencies because all of these contingencies protect your interest as the buyer. The financing contingency protects you in the case that your loan is ultimately denied. As long as your loan is denied by the time that loan contingency date arrives, you can go to the seller, negotiate your earnest money back into your pocket, everybody moves on with their life. Financing contingency is the only thing that protects you in that instance. Now, if you're working with me, 
Uh, you're not going to be denied by the time your loan commitment comes around. I issue accurate pre-approvals, but there are a lot of people out there, especially as lending guidelines kind of tighten up, that are running into unexpected qualification problems that can cause a real, real big problem as it relates to your contract. So that contingency that you have built into the contract under normal conditions is important for that reason. But maybe you feel comfortable waiving it because you are so highly qualified. That brings us to the other two. The appraisal contingency protects you in the case that the appraiser is not able to justify the price that you have agreed on with the seller. Now, it is very, very clear to me and everybody in the industry right now that people, like I say, are going nuts. Not only are they waiving these contingencies, but they are also offering, in many cases, well above the asking price on the property. Now, it's hard to make any objective criticism of going above a particular list price on a particular property because there are certainly cases, I think, where people are actually listing maybe below market to attract a lot more attention and then they're instigating a bidding war that they generally know is going to happen if they've got a quality property that's priced anywhere even in the realm of normal. These bidding wars happen and the prices get bid uh, well above that asking price. Now the appraisal happens to really protect two parties. Number one, the bank. The bank is not going to lend uh, on a property based on an inflated value. We're only going to lend up to a certain percentage of the appraised value or the purchase price, whichever is lower. So if that appraisal comes in low versus this maybe kind of crazy inflated price that you've agreed to with the seller, which I understand is in some cases what you have to do to lock in the deal. If you don't have that appraisal contingency and you go to the seller and say, I'm so sorry, my bank isn't going to lend me the money that I need to buy your property because it didn't appraise. Without that contingency, the seller is going to say, sorry, they're going to take your earnest money. They could take you to court. It's not a good position to be in. If you are going to waive the appraisal contingency, you got to have a game plan for the possibility of that appraisal coming in low. You have to have the ability to cover the gap between the appraised value and the purchase price you've agreed to with the seller, plus whatever down payment it is that you need to make your loan work. So very, very important contingency. It's a very, very important protection that I'm seeing a lot of people let go to make their offer more, uh, more competitive overall. Which brings us to the last contingency that's built into the typical sales contract to protect the buyer, which has to do with inspections. Now this is maybe, out of all of the ones that we've talked about so far, this is maybe the craziest one uh, to, to waive. What the inspection contingency in the contract allows you to do is say, look, on day one when you go look through the property, you are not seeing the guts of that property. You're not really seeing the systems. And unless you are a uh, highly trained, experienced individual as it relates to uh, home repairs and home condition type issues, if that's a way to say it, uh, you really need a home inspector to tell you what's really going on under the surface. The property could look great and it could have huge problems. The inspection contingency protects you and it gives you an out if the inspector goes to the property and says, okay, you've got a sewer lateral line that is going to collapse. That could be a ten dollars to $20,000 problem. Uh, you've got a roof that has less than two years of life left in it. Any number of things the inspector could find that maybe wouldn't be obvious to you when you're first looking at the property. There are many people that are waiving this contingency entirely. And essentially what they're doing is they're telling the seller, no matter what I find on this inspection report, I am going to agree to buy your property no matter what. And this is, I mean, to some degree, this is potentially a, a massive unexpected liability that could all of a sudden be associated with purchasing that property. So long story short, these contingencies have been built into these contracts for a reason. They protect people against things that can go wrong during a transaction. It is entirely possible that your loan could be denied. It is entirely possible that the, appraised, uh, that the appraisal will come in short, especially if you've gone in over the list price. And it is entirely possible that the inspection will, will give you information that may scare you away from wanting to purchase the property. When you waive these contingencies, you are waiving those protections. And so I'm going to go back to what I said to open up this subject, which is 
Don't go crazy unless you have to. One of the reasons that the prices are so high right now has to do with an issue that is not going to be an issue forever. There is simply a basic supply and demand problem. The inventory of homes for sale do not currently meet the demand of people looking to buy. This is cyclical. This is not forever. And what I'm going to recommend, again, probably very unusual to hear from a lender. What I'm going to recommend is that unless you need to buy a house right now, um, you may want to consider biding your time. There is, in my mind, an almost certainty that prices are going to go down at least to some degree. If they don't go down overall on some sort of aggregate basis, you're certainly going to see fewer and fewer situations where there's bidding wars because there will ultimately be additional inventory that gets into this market that's going to essentially resolve or at least change the supply versus demand problem that we're in right now. So long story short, be careful. If you do need to buy a house right now, be aware of the risks. Don't allow any real estate professional or lender tell you it's not a big deal to waive a financing contingency. It's not a big deal to waive your appraisal contingency. It's not a big deal to waive your inspection contingency. Those are all big deals. And it, you can waive those as long as you are aware of the risk, as long as you're prepared for the risk. But just know that the craziness that we're seeing in the market right now, this is temporary. It's very difficult to say how much longer it's going to persist, but it's temporary. And if you have the opportunity to bide your time and wait for a maybe more ideal environment for a buyer, I would wait. If you need to buy right now, just know the risks. So I would be happy to talk to you anytime about a purchase mortgage scenario or a refinance. Uh, you can give me a call or shoot me a text at the number below anytime. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and please share this content with anybody that you think may find it useful. Thanks so much for watching.